In this video, I'll go over installing Synology's newly released DSM-7 Release Candidate as a virtual machine on a Synology NAS using Virtual Machine Manager. To begin, I'm here on Synology's Release Notes page for DSM-7 Release Candidate, and I want to point out that Synology states right at the top of the page that the Release Candidate is for evaluation purposes only. And while I've generally read that people using the release candidate have had pretty good success, I personally take a more conservative approach and wait until the official release comes out before doing an upgrade, particularly on a production NAS. That said, if you have a Synology NAS that supports running virtual machines, you'll be able to run DSM-7 release candidate as a VM using the virtual DSM license that's included with Virtual Machine Manager and that's what I'll go through in this video. I'll leave a link in the description below to Synology's Virtual Machine Manager webpage if you'd like to check if your Synology NAS supports running virtual machines. Let's start by downloading the installation file for DSM-7 Release Candidate by heading to Synology's Download Center, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. The specific installation file we need is accessible through the Others product type under the model name of Virtual DSM. We'll need to switch to the 7.0 series OS version and download the DSM-7 release candidate PAT file. Next, we'll need to start up Virtual Machine Manager, which is a package that you'll need to install from the Package Center. In my case, I've already installed and set up Virtual Machine Manager, so I'll just start up the application from the main menu. The first thing I'd like to point out is the free Virtual DSM license that is available for us to use to install Virtual DSM 7 Release Candidate. There are various reasons why you may want to run DSM virtually, and I'll leave a link to Synology's Virtual Machine Manager white paper in the description below if you'd like to read up on other use cases. To begin the process of installing the Release Candidate, we'll need to upload the virtual DSM PAT file we downloaded previously by going to Image, DSM Image, and clicking the Add button. We'll come to the Add DSM Image window where we'll need to select From Computer, then select the PAT file we downloaded previously and click Upload. We'll need to click Next, then select the storage where we'd like to upload the system image, then click Apply. This triggers the upload and the creation of the DSM image. Once we see the status of healthy, we can move on and select Virtual Machine. Here, I'll select Create to start up the Create Virtual Machine process. For Operating System, we'll need to select Synology Virtual DSM. For Storage, we need to select the location where the VM will be stored. Under Configuration, General Specifications, we'll need to enter a name for the VM and adjust the CPUs and memory to our specifications. I'll leave these as is in my case. In this storage window, we can select the DSM image we'd like to use, which is what we uploaded previously, and then provide a size of Virtual Disk 1 to the VM. Network, I'll leave as default. For auto start, I'll set mine to last state. I'll provide the DS admin account the ability to power on or off and restart the VM. And if everything looks good, I'll click apply to finish setting up the VM. Here, we just need to power on the DSM-7 release candidate virtual machine. Select use existing license, which is the virtual DSM license I mentioned earlier. Select the license to be mapped to the VM. And finally, apply the settings. The VM will power on, and once we see an IP assigned to the VM, we can bring up a browser window, connect to the IP, and start setting up DSM-7. Once we name the DSM installation, create an administrator account, and click through the remaining initialization windows, will be at our freshly installed DSM-7 release candidate desktop screen where we can test and evaluate this version of DSM in our virtual machine sandbox. 
I won't go into details on the changes that took place between DSM-6 and DSM-7, but I'll leave a link to Synology's release notes for the DSM-7 release candidate in the description below for you to review. I hope this video helps you get started in exploring DSM-7 release candidate in a risk-free way if you're a Synology NAS supports virtual machine manager. And if you've already started using DSM-7, let me know what you think about it. Leave a comment below on the things you like or don't like. Finally, if you found this video helpful in getting started with DSM-7, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel as well. Thanks so much for watching.